So I'm here with Sean Reardon, a professor of poverty and inequality in education at Stanford University, as well as sociology. Thanks for joining us today, Sean. Yeah, nice to join you. So your role in the research for Getting Down to Facts was to look at student achievement over time with a particular focus on poverty and ethnicity and income. Right. So I found some both hopeful signs for what's going on in public schools and also some disturbing information about readiness for kindergarten. I wonder if you could talk about your main findings. Yeah. So the, I think the first main finding is that average test scores, math and reading scores, are lower in California than the nation as a whole, substantially so, but have been slowly catching up. They're, they're still well behind, but not as far behind as they were 10 years ago. How big a gap is that? We found that that, that pattern isn't the same in all school districts. So that's sort of the second big finding, is that in poor and middle class districts, it's nearly a grade level. Um, so it's quite large. In affluent districts, it's, it's zero. There is no gap between California and the rest of the country. The public education system seems to be working fine in affluent places, but there's a lot of room for improvement in, in poor and middle class districts. And then the third thing we found, when we look at kindergarten readiness in California, we see the same thing. That is, we see kindergarten students in affluent districts come to school very ready to learn and as with the same levels of high readiness as their similar peers around the country. But kids in middle class and low income districts have lower levels of, of kindergarten readiness than their peers around the country. And it's that, that difference, that low performance is there in kindergarten and continues all the way through eighth grade, which is the last point we can see in our data. Is it hard to make up a, a year if you come in far behind? Is it hard to make that up? Yeah, it's, I think it's very hard. There are very few districts where kids make up a whole year of learning in five or six years. So that suggests that it's not the public schools really that are responsible necessarily for the low test scores. It's, it's really that kids aren't getting to school with high levels of readiness. And even though they're learning at a good rate as they go through school, they're never catching up to their peers around the country. No, that's fascinating. What do you, what's the implication of that, Sean? Well, I think if you said, well, should we try to improve how much kids learn in the K-12 system, or should we try to get them uh, more ready for school, it looks like there might be more payoff to getting them ready for school. So it could be the quality of preschool, or it could be the fact that there aren't kids who are attending, but your study didn't, yeah. per se. So our study couldn't disentangle how much of those differences in, in readiness are due to differences in the preschool access, preschool quality, neighborhood conditions, family conditions. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. So I was just speaking with Sean Reardon, who was saying that children enter kindergarten already with an achievement gap in California relative to other states. So is that a question of access or is it a quality issue of the programs? It's a little of both. There are many children, particularly infants and toddlers, who just don't have access to care at all. The average cost of infant care is over 50% of the medium income for a single parent. Um, but quality is also an issue. California is behind many other states in increasing the preparation of teachers. And even with this affordability, the pay of preschool yeah. teachers is low, is it not? It's very low. It's, it's low across the country, although in some states it has been substantially improved. Nearly 60% of daycare workers are eligible for public assistance. Very few people who are in the early childhood care industry receive any kinds of benefits. As a consequence, people are not going into early childhood education, especially in a time when you have fairly low unemployment because it is a, a very poorly paid option. It's also exhausting and, and demanding. One of the things we've learned from the research is that children who have disadvantages, such as they are not proficient in English, um, or they're living in poverty, are the children who are most affected by the quality of programs. If we really want to close that achievement gap for K-12, we're going to have to increase our attention and our resources for those children in particular.